hours of court hearings and public comment are over, and soon the Corporation Commission will get a recommendation on whether the state's largest public utility can put new charges on customers who have solar and wind power. An administrative law judge is reviewing reams of documents submitted as evidence in the case. OGE sees the case as critical to their operations, while opponents see it as an attempt to stifle expansion of clean energy. The Oklahoma Corporation Commission will decide if homeowners who use wind or solar power should pay OG&E a tariff if they stay on the power grid. Those alternative energy systems, known as distributed generation, send electricity both directions on the grid. They're de determining what, what the tariff will actually be, but we're following state law on this, certainly. That's state law you guys want and lobby for. Uh, there, there were uh, many people involved in this, yes. That, that includes you? Yes, absolutely. Randy Swanson is a spokesman for Oklahoma Gas and Electric. He insists the tariff is not a new tax. This is not a new tariff. This is not a new cost. Well, how could it not be if I had to pay more? You're not going to pay more. If I get solar, I will. No, you're not going to pay more. You're going to pay your cost. It's just broken out differently on the bill. OG&E already charges customers a fee each month for being hooked up to the electric grid to cover the cost of maintenance. During a hearing by an administrative law judge at the Corporation Commission, members of the public were invited to voice their view of the renewable energy tariff. Reverend Dr. Bruce Prescott, a retired Baptist minister, told the judge that he noticed a disparity in his electric bill and called OG&E to find out why. And I called customer service and I asked, I said, exactly what is the disparity here and how much you charge me for kilowatt hour and the number of hours that I use and the bill that I've received. And I was informed that every customer that is hooked up to the electric grid gets to pay 60 cents per day to be hooked up to the grid. During the hearing on the case, OG&E called in Ashley Brown as their expert. Brown is executive director of the Harvard Electricity Policy Group, a think tank. Following the court hearing, a protest was held outside the Corporation Commission office. Professor Mark Davies telling the crowd. The star witness today for OG&E did not have any good quantitative data in his proposal. Uh, and also, it should be noted, uh, works for an institute, the Harvard Policy Energy Group, which is funded by major utility companies all over the country. During his testimony, Brown did admit that his evidence was based on national studies and not data unique to Oklahoma. Those who spoke against the OG&E proposal had diverse reasons for opposing it. Climate scientists are telling us all over the world, 97% agree that we are in serious trouble. To even be standing here today considering taxing people for doing what they feel is a morally right thing to do for their own children is asinine. In the first place, if you pardon my language, it pisses off the customers who are putting solar panels on their roof. And I don't think that's a good business decision for any company. And secondly, the results of putting a tariff are so infinitesimally small compared to their total budget, it doesn't even make sense. Because our first year in business, we installed over 100 kilowatts of capacity on OG&E's grid. <clears throat> this year, we've installed none. I don't know what to tell people. I feel like this bill was designed to kill like, companies like mine. OG&E also wants to put a new demand charge on customers with alternative power whenever they join the electric grid during peak demand periods. Steve Wilkie is a co-owner of Delta Energy and Design, which sells solar power systems. Part of his job is to look at plans like the one from OG&E and determine their impact on consumers. As demand charges absolutely kill the market. They're confusing. They're for industrial customers, not residential customers. The one place that this has been employed in the United States saw a 99% decrease in solar installations. It is an absolute market killer. It stops people from leveraging their own investment for public good. Wilkie also challenges the claim that distributed generation customers are being subsidized by people without wind or solar power. If we ignore all the other benefits that solar provides, if we accept OG&E's proposal at face value, they still don't prove that solar system owners are subsidized. For several years, power companies in Europe have been feeling the financial effects of increasing use of solar and wind power by residential customers. And now, major U.S. corporations have discovered the value of renewable energy, making what are known as corporate power purchase agreements, or PPAs. 
Those are contracts with utility-scale renewable energy facilities, often bypassing public utility companies. The Rocky Mountain Institute has created the Business Renewable Center, which helps those big companies negotiate the process. The Institute says, Nearly two-thirds of Fortune 100 and nearly half of Fortune 500 companies have commitments to shift to renewables. Leading the way, Google, Apple, Microsoft, and Walmart.